God thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plague, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof, with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Uh, God reigns over everything. The scripture says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. He said, therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, we will not fear. In these times where there are a lot of fears, we have come to a God who strengthens our heart, who strengthens our spirits. Just go ahead and lift up your heart in faith and lift up your voice and begin to worship this God that is above all, that is above every sickness, every disease, every virus. He is God and He reigns. They say God is our refuge, a very present help in time of trouble. We have come to encounter this God this day. We have come to encounter this God who is our refuge. Go ahead. Let your voice be heard. Let your sound be heard in heaven. Let we have gathered to, for a thought by the Lord. Uh, we have gathered for the Lord uh, to change and to transform our lives. Uh, go ahead and tell the Lord that you have come. Uh, let His hand rest upon you. Imanon shall a day celebrate in a mananosia. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above thee. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Let your glory be above all the earth.
Ligeira. to take our confession are we ready are we ready we take it out loud we mean what we say and we say it because we mean it one two and go this is my year of supernatural speed divine acceleration is my lot this year as i sow in the land i wax great i go forward i grow until i become very great i am committed to being a shouter s is for service i serve with passion 
and all my life and because I serve, I have supernatural speed. My bread and water are blessed. I rapidly increase, wax great. I grow forward and I grow until I become great. H is for hour. I pray in tongues for one hour daily. I am touching heavens. Truly my life has changed. I am dedicated and I know I will be celebrated. No tiredness, no weariness, no backing out, no giving up, no failing, no dulling, no compromise. O is for obedience. I am obedient to God. I follow where he goes. I do what he wants. I am obedient to my parents and pastors. I honor them and so it is well with me and my days will be long. As a husband, I am obedient to Christ. As a wife, I am obedient to my husband. As a child, I obey those above me. You is for all trances. I do not talk negative or dirty. No vulgar language, no coarse joking. I speak words of life. My tongue is aligned to his words. And I am not lousy, grouchy, cloudy in my mind. T is for tight. I will not miss paying my tight this year. I am part of God's family. I give a tenth of all my income and increase. It's my choice because I love God. It's partnership with God. God is my business partner. My business cannot go down. My career will not end in despair. My marriage will not become an adage. My relationship and courtship is blessed. Our home is blessed. My children are blessed. I give to the poor so I am exempted from them. Every month I honor my parents and pastors with my substance. I enjoy their blessings and grace this year. E is for excellence. I am committed to a life of excellence. I serve with excellence. They are coming speedily. Every good thing in God is aggregating in my direction. The Lord is doing that which is good in my life. I attract excellence in my life in 2020. R is for reading. Hallelujah. I read God's word daily. I am committed to everyday feasting on God's word. I am a voracious consumer of the word. This year, I am committed to reading 52 books, a book a week. Our readers are leaders. I am leading in my sphere of life. God, help of God is here for me. Favor is speaking for me. Mercy of God surrounds me. I declare it loudly and my voice is not muted. I shout with all my mind. It's my year of supernatural speed. Angels are activated for my advancement. Men are given unto me blessings all around me. In shouts of grace center, we are growing rapidly this year. We are growing exponentially. We take mighty steps. We take the city. We take the nation. We take the world. Nations are subdued to us. God is raising us children. Our sons and our daughters are coming with their silver and gold with them. I rapidly increase. I wax great. I go forward. I grow until I become very great. I have divine acceleration. Glory to God. We rejoice. We dance. We leap for joy. The victory is here. Our mouth is filled with laughter. Ha ha ha. Go ahead and laugh loud loud hallelujah and now is our shout unto the lord go ahead and give a shout of victory so in genesis chapter 8 verse 1 we begin from there the bible says and god remembered noah god will remember somebody here this morning in the name of jesus if you are that person can you have a louder amen, amen. god remembered noah i don't know which area where you want God to remember you, but I'm prophesying to you as one saint of God, that God will remember you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Those things that have made you cry in privacy, that you haven't shared with anybody, those embarrassing things in your life, those things you wish, when will this thing end? God will remember you in the name of Jesus. As, as you start to examine that verse, the, the first striking thing here is that God remembered Noah. And 
I was looking at the word remember. In literal Hebrew, the word is zakar. It means to recall to mind. So, what we are saying is that God recalled to mind about an individual. Remember, we are 7 billion people on earth. And also remember that God knows everybody. at every, God, God can remember the 7 billion people at the same time, at the same time, all at the same time. God has that capacity. But here we see God bringing his attention to just one individual. Are you that one individual in this morning? May God remember you. May God remember you. May God remember you in the name of Jesus. And so, I was meditating on this scripture you know, earlier this morning. And I, I saw that, look, in order to remember something, that means you must have forgotten, isn't it? Say, oh, I just remember. That means you forgot. So the question here is, does it mean God forgets? Uh, well, if you look at it from the perspective that, well, everything is possible, God can do anything, we can say, yes, God can forget if we want to forget. And actually, the Bible says, your iniquities will I remember no more. So we see that it's possible for God to forget, isn't it? But I studied the scripture and I saw that, yes, God can forget iniquities, but he can't forget you as a person. He won't. Are you following me? So, can we safely say that God forgot her? Because that guy spent, uh, all together he spent over a year in the process of that system. Over a year. So it was as if God just abandoned him inside the ark and forgot about him. Can we safely say that God forgot him? Because if you look at another scripture in Isaiah 49, 15, 16, that seems to contradict what we have here. It says, can a woman forget her second child that she should not have compassion on the son of a womb? He says, yeah, she may forget. He said, but I will not forget thee. Behold, I have a grave with thee upon the palms of my hands, thy walls are continually before me. So in Isaiah 49, 15 to 16, the Bible is telling us there that God will not forget. In fact, in Luke chapter 12, verse 6, the Bible says, Are not five sparrows sold for two fathoms? And not one of them is forgotten before God. In other words, God does not forget. So why then will the Bible say God remembered Noah if he has not forgotten him? Have you been in situations sometimes and you feel God has forgotten you? Well, I'm, I'm not sure God still remembers me here. Probably you have been in that situation or you are in that situation right now. Why did the Bible say God remembered Noah? I'm going to show you. Message translation of Genesis chapter 8, verse 1. The first part. Genesis 8, 1. Do you have message translation there? Genesis chapter 8, 1, 8. Let's have it quickly. Message. Genesis chapter 8, verse 1 in message. Look at it. Then God turned his attention to Noah. Hallelujah. Did you see that? So it wasn't that God actually forgot Noah. When he said, when he said and God remembered Noah, what just seems to happen is that instead of God blessing generally right now, God said, let me just bless this one person. Are you that one person? God turned his attention. Hallelujah. Is God turning his attention to somebody here this morning? To that situation, your finances, your job opportunities, what you are trusting God for? What will it be like if God turns his attention to you? You alone. Of all his power, in all his majesty, in his greatness, his gloriousness, or his omniscience, omnipotence, and just turns his attention to you as an individual. Come and say, that's me this morning. Say it, say it, say it, say it. With all boldness, God is turning his attention to me. Look at your neighbor and say, it's me, it's me. God is turning his attention to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, Okay, the, the media might not have it, but let me read this. Basic Bible English translation. It says, and God kept Noah in mind. Kept him in mind. Genesis chapter 19, 29. Let me show you an example of where God remembers somebody. Genesis 19, 29. KJV, Genesis 19, 29. The Bible says, and it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God 
remembered Abraham. I mean, th that place was being destroyed. But God decided to focus his attention on Abraham and say, I'm not going to destroy this guy. He remembered him. Are you still with me? Let's go on. Let's go on. Genesis 30, 20. Genesis 30, 20. It's going to get interesting here. Genesis 30, 22. 30, 22. Genesis 30, 22. All right. Look at what it says here. God remembered Rachel. And God hearkened to her. How is it? Does, is it that God forgot this woman before? God hearkened to her. In other words, God listened to her prayers. And then the Bible says, and he opened her womb. Every womb that is closed this morning is opened in the name of Jesus. Ah, somebody says, oh, I'm a man, I don't, I don't need that uh, prayer. You need it. Move of your business, Inko. Yes, Move of your career. Is somebody here with me? Yes, it was the remembrance that God had on Rachel that caused the opening of her womb. For I'm speaking to somebody this morning. That pregnancy, that business, that open door, that job, that international job that you've been carrying as a pregnancy and asking God, this month of God is going to remember you and is going to open your womb in the name of Jesus and you are going to give birth to the reality of that which you are trusting God for. If you believe what I'm saying, can you shout hallelujah? God remembered Rachel. In other words, if God did not remember Rachel, she could have been barren for life. She could have been barren for life. With no significant miracles. With no seed coming out from her. But God decided to remember. Look at me very well. God is going to remember me this month. What about you? Hallelujah. Glory to God. God. Hearkened unto her. And opened her womb. Wherever you find yourself. God is going to remember you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Psalm 136 and verse 23. Psalm 136 verse 23. 136 verse 23. The Bible says there, it says, Who remembered us in our low estate? For his mercy endureth forever. God remember us in our low estate. In other words, wherever you find yourself, you might say, oh, can God even remember me? Can God even locate me? The Bible says he remembered those people in their low estate. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Psalm 106. 106 verse 4. Psalm 106 and verse 4. The Bible says the says, remember me, O Lord. With the favor that thou bearest unto thy people, visit me with your salvation. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor. God will remember you with favor this month. Amen. God will favor you this month. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Look at another scripture, 1 Samuel 119. 1 Samuel 119. And they rose up in the morning early. And worshipped before the Lord. And they returned to their house. And returned. And came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Anna, his wife. And the Lord remembered her. Elkanah knew Anna, his wife. And the Lord remembered her. So if the remembrance part of the Lord does not come, there won't be a child. Somebody here with me. The, God remembered her. That means she got pregnant and then she delivered. This month is a month of birth. In the month of birth, no matter how big that pregnancy is, are you here? Or no matter how small you, you know, have you seen some people who are pregnant and then it doesn't even show until the ninth month? They say, I didn't, didn't show. So some people it will show, some it will show. But by the ninth month, Something will move in heaven. And there will be a response on earth. 
and the baby will turn. Who tells the baby to turn? That this is time. It's your night ones. Is somebody here with me? And the baby will turn and the woman will go into labor. Glory to God. And our waters will break and the baby will come forth. Your baby is coming forth this month. Amen. It could be that business you've been nurturing all this while. It could be that uh, job you are trusting God for. It could be financial help you are believing God for. But whatever it is, it will come forth this month in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Amen. So some of us say, well, I've been praying. Everything has really happened. Yeah, you've been praying. And all your prayer has been, uh, has been pushing you to this place where the baby will finally come out. See, when somebody is pregnant with a baby, especially uh, in the first trimesters, first trimesters and second trimester for some people, there will be a lot of inconvenience. The woman will be thrown up. All kinds of morning sicknesses. And that was the point where women would start asking for all kinds of strange things to eat. Some women say they want to lick stone. Say, let me, let me find a salad and biscuits. All kinds of stuff. <laughs> because of the thing they are carrying. Are you here with me? Because of what? Because you are carrying something. And so when you see a pregnant woman that is heavy, the way that person is walking, and then they are fighting there. People are fighting. Maybe one area boy, they are fighting, and this woman is pregnant. Will she go near them? Oh, no, no. Say, oh, no, no, I don't want trouble. I can't go here. Why? Because she's carrying something. If she's not carrying anything, she can go there and fight and do all of that. The same way when you are carrying something to be delivered, you, go, you don't get into unnecessary trouble. You don't get into fight with people. Yes, Why? You are carrying something. Yes, sir. Now, the person you want to get into trouble to may not be carrying anything. Are you here with me? But you are carrying something. So you want to be careful the way you behave, the way you comport yourself. You don't want to get into strife with anybody. Hallelujah. You don't want to fight with anybody because you are carrying something. Come and tell somebody I'm carrying something. Hallelujah. And so when it comes for the woman to give birth, there's something that announces that her time has come. That's what we usually think is an end of It's called pain. The pain you feel sometimes is not there to get you down. It's just there to announce to you that, hey, your time is up. Your time is up. That blessing is coming forth. That car is becoming a reality. That house is being birthed. That contract is becoming a reality. Are you following me here? So pain becomes an announcer. See, why all the things I've been doing, I've been giving up free pain, my ties and praying and trusting God and doing all kind of more things are not being. Everything is just down. No. no, you don't get depressed at such points. No pregnant woman gets depressed to a point and says, no, I'm not even going to hospital again. I don't want to give. No. In all of the pain and the weakness and the tiredness, she drags herself up and says, no, 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 I will still get to church this time. It doesn't matter what I'm going through, I will, I will still get there. Why? Because she knows something is here. And so there's people that don't carry anything that live their life carelessly. Go to church once in a month. Once in two weeks. For some people, once in a year. Christmas or New Year's service. But you don't live your life like that because of what you are carrying. Are you, are you here with me? Yes, sir. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I remember our last, our last son when he was going to be given birth to. I was right there by my wife. Praise God. <laughs> The hand of Zerubbabel has started this and that's to complete it. Amen. The, my, my first two sons, they just kind of chased me out. I, I was very young then, so I, did, I didn't fight them. They said, no, 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 you can't be here. So I left. Second boy, no, 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 you can't be here. I left. Third boy, I said, no, we are here together. They wanted to chase me. I said, no, 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 we are here. He said, no, it's not allowed. Then my wife said, I want him, I want him around. I said, you see? You see now? We did this thing together. Let's see it together. And so we were there in the hospital bed and she was in labor. And the nurses checked her and said, well, she's just one or two centimeters dilated. It's not a time yet. And I sleep. As they were going, God spoke to me. He said, that baby is coming now. 
the next few minutes. So I told you, no, I said, excuse me, don't go far. That baby is coming and say, are you going to teach? That's why we don't allow people here, you know. <laughs> are you going to teach us our job? Somebody is just one centimeter. <laughs> Please, let's do our job. The nurse went right there and slept. Slept off. So I was there by my wife. Since God told me his baby is coming, so let's wait. So she was holding my arm. Praise God. If your wife has long nails, praise God. By the time you are married, be careful. <laughs> eh? So she was holding my arm, and all of a sudden that grip tightened. I said, again, <laughs> just tighten. And while I was still, was, I was still trying to ask what's going on, I've never seen that kind of thing. You know, you push, and then some of us have probably seen a baby coming out on Instagram, and all that. You come, the head shows slowly, and then they come. No, this boy didn't come like that. He was so much in the hurry. My wife gave one serious push and the baby shot out. I'm talking of, when you, it's like when you take something, you pump something. Shot out of her, boom, and landed at the edge of the bed. I said, no, no, in the two centimeter dilation. You may... She woke up from saying, ah, ah, ah. I, said, I told you, then God spoke to me. You, you, you are talking science. You are talking about God here. <laughs> Hallelujah. She, the, the baby just, boom! It wasn't slowly. It wasn't one by one. Maybe the, the finger first. I said, ah, kill him when try to shave. <laughs> so when your blessing is coming this morning, you know, boom! <laughs> Suddenly. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah! I said, when God wants to give you a car, he will give you staring force. I said, yeah, yeah, Angel, Angel, give him a full right tire. Ah, to to Daphne, then give him the headlamp. No, it doesn't happen like that. Come on, do like that. Suddenly, suddenly your life is translated. Suddenly your captivity is turned around. Suddenly that miracle is birthed. Hallelujah. That's how it happens. The Bible says they were, they were at, uh, uh, the disciples were together and suddenly the Holy Ghost came. Suddenly. Suddenly. As I was saying, well, if something's going at least we should be seeing the signs little by little. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That, that baby boy didn't give no sign. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I was so scared. I thought the, the head was going to eat the edge of the bed because it was an iron bed. But don't worry. Your miracle is going to be battered safely. Amen. Nothing is going to eat anything. Amen. You know, there are some miracles you, you, that happens you want to share. With, ah, um, I actually beg for it. So I would like to share that this morning. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something that God will do and you know that this is what God has done. You will experience it this month in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Glory to God. All right, can I have Psalm 78? There's something I want to show us very quickly. It's a key. It's a key to making God to remember you. Also, one of the questions I, I suppose you should ask is, if, what, what, is there anything I can do so that God can remember me. That's what I want to show you. I want to show you something here. Very powerful. When God showed me this morning, I was excited. Psalm 78, 35. Can we be fast, media? Psalm 78, 35. All right. The Bible says they remembered that God was their rock and their high God, their redeemer. So here, what happened here was that we are talking about God remembering us, right? But what, what happened here is they first of all remembered God. Are you here with me? In other words, there's a remembrance before remembrance. Remembrance doesn't just happen. Uh, they said God will remember us. I'm waiting. No. You remember God first. In your devotional life. In the way you relate with him. In, in living rightly before him. They remember that God was their rock. And the high God, their redeemer. Last month, we were looking at a redemption reality series. How many people believe God is their redeemer here? The word redeem means to buy back. You have been bought back. God bought you back. 
And so the Bible said they remembered. I'm going to challenge us this month, every day of this month, to do this. It's a process. You wake up in the morning, you just remember God. You say, God, I just thank you. I just worship. It's so easy to do. The first thing to pick up is not your phone. It's so easy. God, I, I just thank you. I just worship you. Bless your name. I just thank you because you are my God. I thank you because this morning you are going to do something awesome in my life. I thank you because something beautiful is happening in my direction this morning. I worship you because beautiful is going to happen. They remembered God that it was their rock. Rock is something that is hard, that is unmovable, something you can rest on. Something you can, you can say, no, 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 no. When I'm, when I'm resting on this, I, I, I can rest. I don't, I don't need to be shaken. I don't need to pant. I don't need to feel because he is my rock. How many of you believe that God is your rock in the house this morning? He's your rock. Hallelujah. They remember. You know that word? It's a process of recalling to mind. You recall it to mind. You bring it back to your mind that yes, it doesn't matter what has happened to me in the time past, but God is still my rock. It doesn't matter what I've gone through. All the negative experiences, all the abuse, all the losses and everything I've experienced, I still want to remember that God is my rock. Because what, God, what the devil wants you to do is to forget about God and see God as one far away, disenfranchised father and being that is so far away and disconnected with whatever you are going through. But that is not God. The Bible says identify with what we are going through. They remember. It's a process, people. It's not something just well, I remember God. No, no. It's a process. You sit down and begin to recount and recall to mind. They remember that God was their rock. Let's see. Few verses down in verse 39. Let's see how God responded. Verse 39 of Psalm 78. They first of all remember God. Now look at what God did for he now remembered. He remembered. They remember that God was their rock. Now God now remembered them. It was a remembrance that triggered another remembrance. It's your remembrance that will trigger a divine remembrance. Is somebody here with me? It's not something that is automatic. You don't Are you here with me? So they remember that God was their rock and then the next thing God remember them. God will remember you this month in the name of Jesus. So it was the remembrance of God that caused God to remember them. And today is Thanksgiving. I challenge you to remember God in Thanksgiving this morning. What is Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is when you celebrate the act of God in your life. All he has done, for example, since the beginning of this year, you look back at January and February, March, April, and then you begin to recall about the blessings of the Lord, about the goodness of the Lord, about his protection and provision, and all the things he has done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You remember. So you enter his gate with thanksgiving every day. Hallelujah to Jesus. There's a thanksgiving that you give to God because you know God will do it. And because you know that God owes no man. There's a thanksgiving you do when you thank him for all he has done because you know he will yet do more. The word recalling to mind is a conscious effort on your part. You might even have to write down what are those good things that God has done for me since the beginning of this year. Because sometimes we can get so and, and we, we can get so engaged in what we want and what we want and then forget about what he has done. You recount. You recount. You thank him for all the seemingly negative circumstances, but which were actually designed to step you up. You thank him for that love and that jilted you. Because if he didn't jilt you, he won't allow the right person to show up. You thank him for the wrong person that left your life in order for the right to show up. You thank him for that examination you wrote and you thought you failed and yet you passed. Hallelujah. The time you knew you blew up the interview and yet you were employed. You thank him. No, no, you don't come around and say, I'm just a brilliant person. I'm a sharp gun. It's not your sharpness. It is the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
the job you got that you know you were not qualified for. I've seen that happen several times. People run to me and say, Pastor, I'm in trouble. Has this job they gave me? I'm not, I don't even know. I'm, I'm, I don't know whether I'm competent. I don't know whether I can do it. I said, if God give you the job, don't worry. You will do the job. Give, start giving yourself self-development. Learn on the job. And don't, like, like, don't act like you don't know anything. If somebody knows something and you act like you don't know it, you end up not knowing it. If somebody doesn't know something, you act like you know it. Have you seen some people with some crazy confidence before? And you're like, what's wrong with this guy? So much confidence. Have you seen people blow grammar with confidence? He's, he's murdering the grammar, but you're listening. Because with the confidence with which he was blowing it and explaining it, well, yes, he's blowing grammar, but he must be going somewhere with this energy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank him for the gift of life. If I ask you, when did you wake up this morning? You say, well, around 6 o'clock. No, that's when you open your eyes. The time you woke up, you didn't know. For the waking up belongs to God. It was the one that woke you up. So the time you woke up and the time you opened your eyes are different. Have you seen some people who slept and then they woke up dead and their eyes are open? So the opening of the eyes is not waking up. Somebody here with me. Waking up is a process. It happened in a split of a second was a process. All your lungs, liver, everything, they have to wake up. Your brain has to wake up. Sometimes, have you, if it ever happened to you that you woke up when your brain has not woken up? Yeah? Where am I? I see I was anybody here. Oh, you start talking nonsense. And you're... you're I think we were talking nonsense. You see, I didn't say anything. See how you were talking nonsense. You were asking for beans. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When did you sleep yesterday? It's 9 p.m. No, that was when you closed your eyes. So you thank him for all of that. You don't take it for granted. This year, many assignments have been terminated, but not yours. You thank him for it. Many destinies have been silenced into the land of forgetfulness. But here you are, you thank him. Many bright future who thought the races to the swift were truncated in the midst of their days. But you are here planning for the next big thing that God will do in your life. Come on, shout hallelujah. Many have lost their mind. And yet, what they faced that led to that wasn't as tough as what you went through. And yet your mind is still intact. Thank him for it. Many suicidal notes were left. And that was all that was left behind. Notes, notes, notes. You write us, gone. But this morning you can write down your testimonies. You thank him for it. Many weddings were done, have been done. But many fell apart and the center cannot hold again. But you and your spouse are planning for vacation. Thank him. You had a breakup. Thank him because your life is not broken. I always tell people that a broken relationship is better than a broken life. If your life is not broken, life has not ended. Are you with me? Thank him. How do you thank God? You thank him by recounting all the acts of God. You thank him in your songs. In your dance, you thank him with a special seed, your financial seed. You thank him with it. You thank him with everything, everything about you, about your life. In Psalm 96 and verse 8, he said, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. How do you do that? Psalm 96, verse 8. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. He says, bring an offering and come into his courts. So one of the ways to give glory to God for the month in thanksgiving is to come with a seed. It's your worship to God in thanking him for what he has done in your life. Are you following me here? What will thanksgiving do for you? Number one, it will increase you and multiply you. Jeremiah 30, 19. He said, out of them shall proceed. Thanksgiving. 
and the voice of them that make merry. I will multiply them. You see, the moment Thanksgiving proceeds, and the voice of them that make merry, the voice of them dancing and rejoicing and worshiping, I will multiply them. May God multiply you. He said, they shall not be few. I will also glorify them. They shall not be small. You will not be small in Jesus' name. I need to let you know, people of God, that the race is not always to be swift. That all you need to go forward and become a great person in life is not your academics. Your academics are important. It's, it's good you come out with a good grade, first class. I was telling my son, you must come out with a first class. So all of that is good. But with all of that, you better give some space to the things of God. You better know God. There are first class graduates who are third class in life. There are people who didn't go to school. They are multi-millionaires. The race is not always to be swift. There are people who read and read and read and at the fourth general level, they lost their mind. There are people who graduated on their way to go and serve, they died. You are going to need God. That's it. So you thank him every day, every morning. The first thing to do is not to go on Instagram in the morning. You thank him. You learn to give thanks. You learn to worship him. You learn to give him praise. Let it become a habit. Something you do regularly, every morning. The first thing you do is to lift up your voice and say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for yesterday. Thank you for everything you did. Thank you because today will be prosperous. Everything I lay my hands upon to do, I will prosper therein. Can you remember one or two things God has done for you in the last few months? Can you talk to God right now? And thank him. Thank him. Lebrato shatamandolo bosia. Let's just go ahead right now and uh, plant our seed, our offerings and our tithes. Wherever you are, uh, you will see the details of how to plant your seed. You will see that on the screen. Glory to God. You will see the details on your screen right now. So just go ahead and um, plant your seed. And uh, we're going to take the confession over our tithes together very quickly. And then we're going to take the confession over the offering very quickly as well. All right, if you are paying your tithes online with the information on the screen, let's just take this confession together. Say after me or just follow the screen. I confess this day to you, Lord God, that I've come into the inheritance which you swore to give me. I was a sinner, I held in bondage and in darkness by Satan, but I call upon the name of Jesus, and you heard my cry and delivered me from the power and authority of darkness. You lifted me out of my affliction and oppression. You took me in, forgave me, and translated me into the kingdom of your dear son. You made me yours through the shed blood of Jesus and gave me authority over the evil one. Jesus, as my Lord and high priest, I bring the force of my income which you have given me. I expect you to set it before the Father and worship him with it. I rejoice in all the good which you have given to me and my household. I have listened to the voice of the Lord my God and have done according to all that you have commanded me. Now look down from heaven, your holy habitation, and bless me, your son and servant, according to your riches in glory. Bless my job and the work of my hands as you have promised in your word. I declare let the blessing is pouring out and there's not enough room to receive it. God, you have rebuked the devourer for my sake. The work of my hands will not be destroyed and come to nothing. Today, I'm experiencing God's supernatural increase and I walk in it by faith. I worship you, Lord, and I call it done in Jesus' mighty name we pray.
Hallelujah. All right, you can give your tithes online with the information on the screen. Very quickly, let's take the confession over our offering. Father, your word says that he will minister seed to the soil, both ministers bread for my food, and multiply my seed sown, and increases the fruits of my righteousness. Therefore, I'm enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through all sense given to God. I thank you for it, Lord. I stand on Mark 4.23, which says, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. So I make the decision right now to receive. I will receive. I will do all things necessary. I will plant. I'm planting right now. I put the sickle to the harvest. My confession is on the word. My confession is by faith. In Jesus name, I receive now by faith the hundredfold return of this seed that is in my hand. I do this in obedience to the word. And Satan, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. You are the persecutor. Take your hands off my money. This is not your seed. It is not your land. And it is mine and God's. Stay out of my garden. Stay off my farm for the harvest is mine. Lord Jesus, I plant the seed in the shouts of grace center and I believe in its return because you said it. I dedicate it to your service, to your affairs in Jesus' name. It will be as the loaves and fishes when you use the wonderful principle to feed the people. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Use the information online to transfer your offering and your tithes. Or simply click on the uh, link that is below the post and it will take you to our page on our website where you have different options to give. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Hallelujah. I believe we had a wonderful time in God's presence. Amen to Jesus. Glory to God for such a wonderful time in His presence. We're going to take our announcement right now. Uh, we want you to join us for an online experience on our social media platforms. Follow us on Facebook at KHC Global. Follow us on Twitter at KHC Global. Follow us on Instagram at Pastor Dunamis and at Shout of Grace Center. And follow us on MixLR at KHC Global as well. Also on YouTube at Dunamis Tunde Okunowo. And also, we encourage you to visit our website on www.kissesandhawks.com for rich content for singles and married. Thank you so much for being with us. We hope you had a nice time. God bless you. Come on, put our hands together as Pastor Dynamis ends today's service for us. Amen. This is the end of the message. We believe you've been blessed. Join us at Shouts of Grace Center on Sundays and Wednesdays at Joker Plaza, Ibadan. God bless you.